Hello, welcome. We're, we're glad you're here with us on this beautiful morning. To begin with, I'd like to ask you, Blair, what you consider to be so important about global warming. The two greatest existential threats to human life on Earth are climate change and the threat of nuclear war. Either of those can lead to catastrophe for human beings. On the question of climate change, there are a few things we can do and we can start doing right now. We shift off of fossil fuels, fossil fuels such as coal, oil, natural gas, we can continue to use some renewables such as wood, but we should shift our main focus to using solar-based renewable energy. That includes wind, hydro, and photovoltaic cells, solar cells. This, does, this won't happen all at once, it can't happen all at once, but it can it will be a transition, but the transition should start now. And a way to encourage that is to phase out the subsidies that the fossil fuel industry enjoys and shift those subsidies to the development of renewable energy sources. By replacing fossil fuels with renewable sources, we will make our air better, we will reduce pollution, we will create new jobs and opportunities, and we'll have a much much healthier planet. A second thing we can do is to educate girls and women. When we talk about the load that human beings place on the earth, we don't often talk about the population. But the population now is seven or eight billion people and growing. There's an easy approach to this, which has a multitude of benefits. It's the education of girls and women. Studies have shown that girls and women who have had education through 12th grade have four or five fewer children in their families. This is not telling people they can't have children. This is women making choices not to have children because they see the benefits of that for the well-being of the children that they do have. Then we can talk about trees. There's talk about, well, how do we get CO2 out of the atmosphere? What about new technology to do that? Well, trees are already here and require no technology. They require planting and a little care. But trees will help draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and store it for long periods of time. Trees help mitigate the extreme weathers of hot and cold, wet and dry. They provide habitats for people, for animals, for all kinds of creatures, and they make for a healthier, more diverse world. It's easy to do. Don't burn down forests plant more trees, restore habitat, and we're well on the way to controlling carbon dioxide. We've talked about renewable fuels that do not harm the atmosphere. We've talked about the importance of trees. We've been talked about the, the outlier, the importance of educating girls and women, and how that impacts the general health of the earth as well as the humans on it. I'd like to segue into the preservation of natural beauty and the preservation of nature that we've seen in uh, Celtic lands, uh, in the most ancient places, the importance of public lands. Because if it's strolling after dinner together, or uh, if it's meeting in the park when the, when the kids are small so they have a place to play and the adults can, can chat. It's the setting that nature provides us is just unbeatable and unmatched. And I, I don't want us to lose sight of the importance of nature and the ta taking care of nature as having a direct benefit to each of us individually and as a family. 
why else should we pay attention to global warming? What other benefits can we gain from dealing with global warming? Oh, that's a big question. It's mainly to maintain the habitability of the planet, as well as its beauties. Our planet today has an intricate but balanced, self-regulating system of providing oxygen to breathe, carbon dioxide for plants, but these things have to be held in, in a balance. We can't get too much carbon dioxide in the air. It will warm the planet, and ultimately, it affects your health. So if you think of a submarine that might be sealed up for days or weeks, you have to add oxygen for people to breathe to stay alive, but you also have to get rid of a lot of the carbon dioxide that they exhale because carbon dioxide, as it increases, affects your body at the lower levels, maybe twice or three times what the atmosphere is carrying today, you start to feel it in your eyes like a really bad smoggy day. But if it gets higher, too much carbon dioxide will kill you, asphyxiation. So as the atmosphere control officer on a submarine, I had to think about these things and control them. Now you're coming from your um, your experience and your training as a scientist and as a uh, someone who has been on a, underwater and had to, to really think about these things pretty carefully with, uh, so that everyone would stay alive. I want to just give a nod to where I come from, and that is my own parents, but also to Slovenia and Austria, to our relatives there, because they, they still teach us how important it is and how, how many benefits there are from from maintaining the forest, uh, keeping bees, from having a, a habitat for the animals. It all benefits the humans and it all works together. So I would advocate a comprehensive approach to this. We, we have so many different aspects of science working together so that all of us can have a wonderful walk after Sunday lunch. That is one of the uh, most ingrained traditions that we see all over Europe. People getting together and strolling on Sundays. A Sunday in the park with George. It's very much a part of everyone's rhythm. And to go back to those old rhythms and to go back to the conservation of the forests and uh, the natural beauty for animals, for trees, for our kids, for all of us. It has such immense benefits, it seems to me. Well, that's very true. It makes the world a wonderful place. But we have it at risk with fossil fuels. And there are those that say, but what about the jobs with fossil fuels? Well, those jobs can transition to clean energy. It'll take time, but we've got to get started. We've got to get started now. Blair, before we sign off here, I'm remembering earlier on that the Woods Institute was very involved with the carbon emissions of buildings and the energy efficiency of buildings with self-heating and so on, and designing windows that uh, would generate enough electricity to run everything that the house needed to have uh, done. Concepts like that. Could you just briefly address the importance of including structure and even materials like cement, uh, finding better ways than cement to, to do what, what cement does in a building project? Yes. The, the use of energy has two sides to it. One is producing the energy. The other is being as efficient as you can be in using that energy. So we see this in many areas, even even in the fossil fuel areas, measures taken to increase efficiency, such as the efficiency of automobiles to move using less gasoline. We can apply that more broadly. We can apply efficiency means to reduce the energy used by houses and buildings. And it doesn't take that much more in the first time construction of those buildings to make them much more energy efficient. It doesn't mean taking away windows. 
It means making the windows more efficient. Similarly, you can choose your materials and be careful in using them. It turns out that one of the largest carbon dioxide emitting processes on the planet is the making of cement and things out of cement, mainly the making of the cement itself. So that's a ripe area to look at for increasing efficiency and reducing carbon dioxide emissions. And I should just add that carbon dioxide is, is kind of a, a marker, an equivalency for all kinds of things. An easy way to start, for example, is to reduce the amount of methane that comes out of oil wells or is lost in the process of transporting natural gas from the wellhead to the end user. If you can cut that loss, you're, you're increasing efficiency, of course, but you're also reducing direct emissions. So we really appreciate you joining us on this wonderful Sunday morning. We will look forward to talking with you the next time. We hope that you have benefited from uh, this discussion, that you will be inspired to, to take more action with regard to protecting the, the environment and to the importance of inclusiveness in our decision making and in considerations for our planet thanks to you all for joining us 